Forging IT Security Experts. Secure Ninja. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV, and we are here at Black Hat 2013 at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Co-hosting with me today is Michael Vigen. He's a fellow ninja with Secure Ninja, and he is our chief hacking officer. We're going to be speaking with Todd Beardsley. He is the Metasploit Open Source Engineering Manager. Thank you, Todd, so much for speaking with us. No problem. Awesome. So, um, what does Metasploit have going on this year at Black Hat? Um, well, uh, this year is, is special for us. It's our 10-year anniversary <laughs> of Metasploit. Uh, Metasploit started in 2003, and. Uh, and I can't, I can't believe it's been 10 years. Right. I, I can hardly imagine an internet without Metasploit. I know, absolutely. <laughs> um, how has it changed over the last 10 years? Uh, loads. Um, let's see, when Metasploit started, it was written in Perl. It was kind of hacky. Uh, I think we had um, Metasploit uh, Dave, Metasploit 1.0, I think, had 13 exploits total. Mm. Um, and today, we're at about just shy of 1,300. Um, so uh, we have about 180 or so contributors, and oh, incidentally, we were uh, acquired by Rapid7, uh, oh, yes. which has been super helpful, and they, uh, they pay my paycheck, Absolutely. so that's great. <laughs> so uh, I know that a lot of people are wondering, you know, that Rapid7 said they were going to maintain the open source uh, side of the thing, um, and have you seen any real changes in that, that area of the, the product? Um, all for the better, for sure. Um, you know, we have, we have paid staff, like I'm one of them, um, that, that make sure that the open source stays open source, obviously. Um, Rabbit7 is, is, is delightfully committed to open source. I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with, with what they've been doing uh, and, and uh, you know, allowing us to do the open source thing, which of course is kind of the bread and butter of Metasploit there. We have commercial offerings uh, for Metasploit. We have Metasploit Pro. Uh, we also um, you know, have a, a, a couple other things coming up in the works that are uh, Metasploit themed. Um, but the core is, is the, not just the open source code, but the open source community. I wanted to ask you about that. So, um, right when the announcement of Rapid7 acquiring uh, Metasploit, there was a lot of concern in the open source community. Sure. A lot of people didn't want to contribute to what they felt would be a commercial venture. Have you seen um, more readoption, more more of the open source community coming back, or did you ever see an exodus to begin with? Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't describe it really as an exodus. I mean, yeah, obviously there's going to be there 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 are a few people that you know don't feel like they need to. Be spending their volunteer time like enriching Rapid Seven, but uh, at the end, um, everything we do in Venice is not not only open source, but I think one of the more liberal open source licenses. It's VSD licensed, so it's it's a real easy short license. Uh, there's no encumbrances on it. Um, anyone can use Metasploit uh, for any legal purpose, and uh, uh, so I, I I think that fear has over, over the last four years or so since Rapid Seven's acquisition is pretty much abated. I mean, we have a really active developer community, really active user community. I mean, you look on YouTube, I mean, we have something like 40,000 videos of like keyword Metasploit. So, I mean, people are clearly using it and very happy to do so. Oh yeah, no, I use it um, in a lot of my, my assignments. So, awesome. you know, I, we actually have a Metasploit Pro in as well, mm -hmm. I, but I primarily use the open source one. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, so what about things like set and the other you know plugins that go with it? Have you had any stale stalemates in those, or, or are those people also really willing to contribute still? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean that's that's all that's all just keeping on. I mean, like, like I can I can see the argument right of like not again like not wanting to volunteer your time for like someone else's for profit venture, but really like the Metasploit framework, which is which is the core of it. I mean that's. The purpose of that is to like advance the state of art of the art of security, like in in the open. I mean, that's why I that's why I work there. Um, at Rapid Seven, we have something of like a church and state mentality, and I think I'm church. In that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we like I I like my 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 prime directive is to like not allow uh, Rapid Seven to like you know make dumb decisions and, and close source some things that really oughtn't be. I spend some time um, you know, trying to make sure that some innovation we do on Metasploit Pro actually does eventually get into the open source. And, and we've seen that like in, in 
in several of the areas of, of functionality. So yeah, the, how what are the main differences between the pro and the open source community version? Um, well, the main difference is that uh, Metasploit Pro, uh, in my opinion, um, it 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 makes easy things easier. Uh, so it's got a really nice you know UI over it. Um, it has a lot of really decent add-on, like we have a whole social engineering uh, functionality in Pro that we don't have in, in Framework. Um, but like you mentioned, Set, I mean, that is that kind of thing is available on an open source side from you know another uh, source. Uh, but yeah, Rapid7 does that. Um, we have a pretty decent uh, uh, web scanning um, functionality in there that you don't get in the regular Framework. Um, in Framework, like you can pretty much like hack together anything you, you need to because it's it's open source. Um, but boy, that's a lot of work and a lot of people just aren't aren't interested in that, you know, and it's it's boring stuff. You know, it's like right. I, I pop a machine, I I I get some kind of credentials, I reuse those credentials at some other machine, I pop those machines. Like that whole thing can be kind of tedious, you know, on a command line. Um, Pro makes that kind of easy thing easy. Um, so so for me at least that's that's the main, like I use, I'm, I'm a framework guy, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm in there on MSF console all the time, but uh, you know, if I, wanted, if I wanna move fast and I wanna get something done, I mean, I, I, I reach for pro, like, uh, I mean, I have a nice license too, so. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you find that it compares, um, I mean, are, are more people dumping your traditional core products or, or app scan or those sorts of products for Metasploit? Are you finding them using them side by side or how, do, how are you finding it being used? Um, uh, in in the I guess customer space, I mean, we do uh, sometimes replace competitors. Sometimes we augment, you know, other solutions. Um, I mean, I think, like, for me at least, Metasploit framework uh, is 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 a is a community resource. I'm such a huge hippie about it, right? Um, because I, I it it it's not just the code. It's it's the exploit developers who all um, really help each other, like write better exploits and do better research and. Um, we're we're doing a lot this year, uh, this year and, and next year in particular, uh, a lot more on like repeatable testing of, you know, not just exploits but like just like core functionality too, like just making sure that everybody can can use it and use it well, and you don't have to be like a super genius to use it. I mean, we're trying to be more of a democratizing force right. for security. So I noticed like, <coughs> excuse me, I noticed things like autopwn got taken out and those sure. sort of things. Um, <laughs> You ever looking to put those things back in there, or uh, patches are accepted? <laughs> <laughs> um, Autopone. I mean, Autopone is one of the things that's contentious. Uh, Autopone was this functionality of Metasploit, where y it was kind of like a throw everything in the kitchen sink against everything. Um, this rarely worked out the way you wanted it to. Um, you didn't have a lot of configuration on, you know, particular payloads or evasion options or anything like like. You, I mean, it was pretty pretty basic stuff. Um, but fun, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing, right? I mean, it's it's okay for like a CTF situation. Not so great like on a live pen test when you're like knocking over everybody's printers and making making a lot of noise. I mean, it's it's a very noisy approach. I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend that like on an engagement. <laughs> Got to tell you though, when you get in an engagement, you can't find anything wrong with it normal, and that's just like your last ditch. It's a hail mary. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you're just like it's <laughs> great. You know, we're gonna um, see what happens. We, there's there's a blog post I like to point at. Like it's super Googleable. You you look for these words: uh, six ways to automate Metasploit. Right. And in this, it's it's a pretty decent document on how to um, automate anything in the framework. Um, using things like you know the the regular API, uh, you know we use resource scripts. Um, th there's a whole bunch of ways to 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 pull that all together in a in a much uh, more sane way than uh, than Autopone ever was, unfortunately. So, but Metasploit Pro though, you have mm -hmm. obviously more automation, and then mm -hmm. you also have reporting in there, which would make it much easier to use in a corporate setting and in a professional setting. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you need to, you know, keep track of what of all your opponents, um, the the reporting piece is, is really really useful um, in in Pro. Uh, this is one of I, I guess probably one of the defining features <laughs> of Pro that uh, that is is attractive to to like the professional pen tester rather than you know the CTF contestant. Right. 
So and that and so these reporting and we have reporting kind of like in different flavors. You can have your summary report. We have like very particular PCI compliance kind of reporting. So things that PCI auditors care about, like we'll just you know spit that out in a in an easy to read format. So. Executive summaries and all that. Totally. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Graphs and everything. So awesome. Yeah. Very management friendly. <laughs> now you you refer to yourself as the church. A little. Between the church yes. and state with uh, Rapid7, is there anything since the acquisition that's kind of like surprised you? Because you're obviously very protective of Metasploit. Yeah, I, I kind of am. I, I take Metasploit to heart. Um, I, I guess that I, I I don't know if I'm so much surprised, but I, I'm really I'm really pleased and happy with with the way that Rapid7 has has continued and kind of doubled down on its commitment on on this whole open source security experiment that we're doing called Metasploit. Um, not only, you know, do they do they fund, and you know, we do pay the bills. Like <laughs> we're powering Metasploit Pro. Don't get me wrong. Um, but not not only are they are are they funding Metasploit as an open source project, um, but we also have like the Magnificent Seven program at Rapid Seven. Um, this is a this is a program that Rapid Seven runs to uh, uh, do kind of a little bit bigger than micro funding, but but like funding for kind of special purpose security, open source security projects um, that come along that, you know, may, maybe need some. Uh, like maybe you need to hire a contract, like kind of, you know, kind of summer code kind of style mm. uh, funding program that, that Rapid7 does. Do you have any so. examples of some of those that you may have already created? Uh, yeah, uh, the biggest, the, the biggest easiest one is uh, John. Um, John the Ripper was a Magnificent 7 project um, for a time. Um, this is pretty much the de facto Standard in, yeah. in password cracking, right. uh, so that was that was pretty good. Uh, also, there's uh, the Cuckoo uh, is another project that's a Magnificent Seven project. It's a automated malware analysis kind of sandboxing uh, tool. They're actually speaking uh, tomorrow morning. I think uh, they're having a workshop on uh, on on that whole malware analysis thing. So excellent. Yeah. So it sounds like Rapid Seven isn't just uh, protecting open source for Metasploit, but they're helping a lot of open source projects get funded and, and you know become better. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's mainly, it's not, you know, you don't like win the lottery on this thing or anything like that. Um, it's, the funding is specifically for, you know, improving your development, you know, maybe getting contractors, maybe being able to hire even an intern can make such a huge difference. Or maybe um, Rapid7 will acquire them somewhere down Or, there. hey, you never know, <laughs> I mean, you hit that big Rapid7 money, I guess. Now you talked <laughs> about how Metasploit has changed in the last 10 years to uh -huh. get you here. How do you foresee it changing in the next 10 years? Um, it future looks bright. Uh, Security is still a thing; will always be a thing. I mean, you know, we have this ritual we do every year in Vegas. Um, <laughs> this little thing. Yeah, <laughs> um, we're looking to interoperate uh, with a, as a host uh, more host OSs. Like this year, we've we've worked pretty closely with the Kali Linux guys, the uh, offensive security. Um, I, I, that experience was really great. Um, again, I mean, this is Rapid7 put like real resources on this, and the Kali experience for Metasploit is really excellent. I want to see that on more operating systems. Um, we already run on you know your stock Ubuntu and Red Hat and Cent and Windows and all that. Uh, I'd love to see uh, you know a really solid install on OS10. I mean, Mac users are are here, you know and. Uh, the, the hardware is a little expensive, but hey, you know, you guys like that. And it is a, it's a pleasant commuting experience, and it should be a pleasant penetration testing experience. Yeah, as we well. still have Fusion. We can still make it work. Yeah, there's, <laughs> we, there, there's a guy out there in the world, open source, uh, who's, who maintains the homebrew, like a homebrew mm -hmm. tap for Metasploit, which is great. It works and everything. Um, he, but it's volunteer, you know. I mean, this could drive tomorrow. Um, hopefully not. Uh, it's always a little bit behind. We don't we don't test on the home like in house like all our in house QA stuff. Like we don't test on the homebrew stuff at all because it's not supported. Um, I would love to see that kind of thing supported. And so um, we just got through like some prototyping. Uh, we have a blog post I think up on uh, running on a Chromebook um, nice. with the so it's a Kali Linux booted Chromebook and boy that's uh, that is very nice because it's light and um, you know I'm I'm all for like shaving ounces off of off of computers when you're mobile and you're you know if you're, you're gonna be traveling to 12 different sites for a job I mean every, every ounce counts <laughs> Definitely. well thank you Todd so much for speaking with us sure and yeah. congratulations on reaching 10 years with Metasploit oh, and thank you. I wish you luck thank at Black Hat and tonight at your party yeah we have party. we have a thing 
It's a little get together of everyone. It's <laughs> a little place called the Palms, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah cool. it'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be well, ridiculous. We'll definitely check it out <laughs> cool. for sure. And everyone at home, make sure you uh, keep up with everything Secure Ninja is filming here at Black Hat and DEF CON uh, starting on Friday. So subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and keep up to date on everything that's happening. I'm Alicia Webb, my co-host Michael Bien. Thank you so much for watching. Secure Ninja Shorts are brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in information security and IT training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. SecureNinja.com, forging IT security experts.